Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 16th of May with me, Patrick Munnerly. <coughs> On the macro front, uh, China's central bank will be the only major one to weigh in with the decision this week. We're most likely still in the downdraft of the global earnings season. And while there are some important macroeconomic readings on growth and inflation, none are likely to have the star power of, say, US jobs or US and Eurozone inflation. That may place the emphasis this week upon off-calendar risk around further developments in China, especially in terms of tracking COVID zero policies and the war in Ukraine and how Russia may react to expected traction towards seeing NATO membership by Finland and Sweden. Still, from a market standpoint, stock market corrections will continue to drive debate over whether they merit changing the macroeconomic and policy rate outlook. Alternatively, should one view the movements as offering more attractive entry points, is still greater caution warranted. These are both perspectives uh, that possibly depend upon one's uh, investment horizon. This contest of narratives will persist and be subject to one's favourite sloganeering, whether it's sell in May and go away, but with probably still less overall willingness to go away. Uh, the latest screaming contest on financial news channels about deflation, depression and stagflation, or is it Warren Buffett's sage advice to be fearful when everyone else is greedy and greedy when everyone else is fearful? We will see. Moving to the data calendar in the US on Monday, we get Fed Empire State Index. Last time out, 24.6, looking for a 15 print. Uh, New York manufacturing sector has been well supported by a full, uh, a pretty firm order pipeline. And then heading into Tuesday, we get April retail sales. Last time out, 0.5%, looking for a 1% print here. Inflation pressuring uh, discretionary incomes and uh, spending. We also get April industrial production, 0.9% last time, looking for 0.4%. Volatility continues to linger as firms navigate supply chain issues. We get also get March <coughs> business inventories, uh, last time at 1.5%, looking for a 1.9% print uh, business rebuilding inventory at a pretty strong pace. And we also get NAHB housing market index, last time 77, looking for a 75 print. Uh, really around affordability concerns now as rising input costs and interest rates are likely to weigh. Also noteworthy on Tuesday, we're going to hear from Fed Chair Powell in an interview. Uh, we also hear from Bullard, uh, Harker and Mester. Heading into Wednesday, we get April housing starts in the US, 0.3% last time, looking for a negative 1.3%. Strength of the labor market and limited supply to support residential construction in the medium term. Then heading into Thursday, we'll see initial jobless claims, last out 203,000. And this is just to remain at a very uh, low level. We also get May uh, Philly Fed Index, last time 17.6, looking for 16.1 business conditions remain healthy. We also get April existing home sales, last time uh, negative 2.7%, looking for a negative 1.8%. Uh, limited supply and cooling demand headwinds are, are likely uh, to impact sales. And that rounds out the calendar for the US next week. So moving to the charts, technically speaking, dollar index remains in uh, in the uptrend here. I'm looking for potential uh, offers to develop into a 105 test, but even then I'm watching three-way pullbacks into the trend channel support here and anything into that 103.40 area. I'll be watching for bullish reverse patterns to engage on the long side, looking for a test of this 108 level uh, which is the 127 extension from the 2021 decline and also now monthly projected range resistance. Moving to the Eurozone, uh, Monday we get uh, March trade balance, negative uh, 9.4 billion last time, deficit to remain wide on elevated energy prices. Then moving into Tuesday, we get Q1 GDP. Last time out, 0.2%. Looking for a 0.2% print here as it's the second estimate and we will rapidly uh, confirm that the economies are slowing in the Eurozone. <clears throat> Heading into Wednesday, we get April CPI. Last time, 0.6%. Again, looking for a 0.6% print this time out. Elevated energy prices remain the key driver there uh, behind European inflation. And... Friday rounds out the week in terms of Eurozone data with May consumer confidence. Last time, uh, negative 22, looking at again, negative 22. Inflation pressuring real spending capacity and sentiment in the Eurozone. So from a technical perspective, the Euro dollar uh, broke the, through the 104 handle 
and we got down as low as uh, as 103.30s this week. I'm looking for any pullbacks into the trend channel resistance 105.70s or even below there into that 105.10 area. Anywhere in that zone, I'm watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side and ultimately looking for a grind down now to head to uh, towards parity in the euro. At this stage, we need to close through the trend channel resistance back through 106 really to suggest that the uh, the downside is done for now and we could see a more meaningful correction play out. Heading to the UK, Monday, uh, May right move house prices last time 1.6%. Demand is likely softening as rate hikes begin to take full effect in the UK. And then on Tuesday, we get March ILO employment rates, 3.8% uh, print looking for the same as last time. Unemployment now remains at pre-COVID levels in the UK. Then on Wednesday, we get April CPI 1.1% last time. And again, it's those energy prices and the cost of living crisis is likely to uh, to be a pressure there. And on Friday, we round out the week in the UK with May GFK consumer sentiment, negative 38 last time at its lowest levels since the uh, since the series began back in 1980. Consumer confidence really under the gun in the UK. And obviously, uh, we get April retail sales, negative 1.4%. Uh, Cost of living really is starting to pressure and weigh on spending in the UK. So from a technical perspective, looking at sterling dollar, uh, we are looking for a test of 120 as the primary downside objective here. So any pullbacks into the uh, 123.90s, 124, I'll be watching for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side, looking for that 120 test. When we get down into that 120, I'm going to be watching if we can get some bullish divergence developing uh, for a more meaningful corrective move to take us back up into the 125 zone. At this stage, any close below the monthly projected range support here at 118 will be a very bearish development and opening up, opening up to much lower levels. Moving to Japan. The calendar starts out there on Wednesday when we get Q1 GDP. Um, last time out, 1.1%. Uh, We're actually looking for a, a negative 0.5% print. Consumption did take a big hit from Omicron in the first quarter. We also get March industrial production, 0.3%. Uh, uh, supply issues are an ongoing headwind in Japan. Then heading into Thursday, we get March machinery orders. Last time, um, negative 9.8%, looking for a positive 3.9% in 9% uh, print here. And the investment outlook does remain clouded though by the supply chain issues. And we round out the week in Japan on Friday, April CPI, percent uh, year over year, looking for a 2.5% print. X food and energy inflation is still negative in Japan. From a technical perspective, dollar yen pulled back into the support zone at the 127.70s. Bids have emerged. I'm looking for any breakthrough 130 again to engage on the long side. Initially looking for a move up to 13350s. Pullbacks then to find support at this prior highs, 130, uh, 131.40s. There again, I'll be looking to add to long positions, ultimately targeting a test of 135 on the upside. At this stage, we'd really take a close back through the trend channel, uh, 127 here to suggest a deeper pullback, likely to test the 125, 124.60s before once again trying another extension to the upside. Rounding out the week down under in Australia, RBA minutes on Tuesday, more colour uh, to the RBA board's views are likely there and we'll see what they're talking about in terms of the future rate path in Australia. Well, on Wednesday, uh, Q1 wage price index, uh, last time 0.7%, looking for a 0.8% print here, a tighter labour market continues to push on wages in 2022. Then on Thursday, we get April uh, employment change. L last time out, 17.9 thousand. Looking for a 30,000 print here. Payroll suggests weather and holiday dampened employment and also dampened participation. So falling unemployment, so we're looking for a 3.9% employment rate print there. And that rounds out the week in Australia. So from a technical perspective, Got that test of our uh, 68.40s, potential reversal here developing. But I'm looking at any three-way corrective moves essentially into the trend channel back 70.60 area. Uh, bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side, targeting the equality objective down to 66.20s. 
Got the monthly projected range of support just above there at 66, uh, 60s. I'll be watching there for bullish reversal patterns to play counter trend longs if that setup develops. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 16th of May. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.